kind of steam where things are going now. Um, it's live on Facebook now. Right, good. I had to come yeah. out of it. Yeah, All right, so, so I've been running. Great, great, great. So, okay, so that's good. It's good to know. More people in the Zoom room. Uh, we've got, where's, oh, Veronica's gone. Is she gone? No, she's not gone. I, I can see her. Yeah, there we go. Oh, she's hiding. Maybe she's doing something. So we'll say good evening to Ruth. Ruth, good evening. Evening, everyone. How are you today, oh. my darling? I'm good, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. How's your day been? Yeah, all right. Nice and relaxing today. Good. All day. Good, good, good. So, uh, Veronica, are you there? Right, so Veronica's gone. We're going we're gonna to go into what we're doing today. So how, how did you not find last week? Let me just ask. <laughs> Which part? Well, any, any part you want to mention. How, how are you finding it? You know, just a, a quick little bit of feedback. How was it for you, Kelly, on last week? It was actually quite explosive. It was, <laughs> yeah. Cause, yeah, because I, I, I look back at it, really, and... It was it was interesting the different topics within the, obviously the subject of love, yeah, and how deep it did get. You know, we, we did actually bring it back with regards to obviously relationships and maybe why things have turned out the way how they are and how we can develop it. And it was great that um, you know Mr. P, um, you know, saw what was needed um, with with Shell. You know, and mess. You know, and that's that's where it is at. You know, where we can see where the needs are, mm -hmm. and um, be, being able to meet it. And obviously, yourself and <laughs> yourself and Ace, um, that was quite comical. Um, and but it was it was comical, but it was edu. Uh, it was the the education of it was just like phenomenal for me last week. You know, it was quite deep. With the you know the different things that we were talking about um, with regards to love, and you know why maybe we're not able to meet it. So it wasn't just about um, man, woman, partners, husbands. It was really about culture, also uh, about about traditions, maybe how things have changed, or maybe you know things that that we how we maybe used to do it when maybe when we were in Africa, we cross over to the Caribbean. You know, go over to the UK and <laughs> things change, evolve. You know, so and obviously you might, you know, um, lend yourself to religion, Christianity or Islam, whatever. You know, how maybe certain things might have changed due to your course of time of where you've travelled, stuff like that. So yeah, it was um, it was interesting. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you got something out of it last week. I know that there was some sparks there last week personalities and you know but this is this is all about communications it's all about relationships at the end of the day sometimes it can be quite explosive in terms mm. of how things are managed and then sometimes it can be quite calming quite soothing so um yeah it uh yeah it was a, a an interesting show last week mm. yeah okay so we've got, oh, so Lorraine is saying good evening to everybody. Hello, Lorraine, how are you? Welcome to the group. So as Kelly was saying, last week we asked a question um, and I'm just going to pick up because we're going to kind of continue but kind of move on from there. And the question was, what are the three most important things in a relationship and why? And what I found out was, because what I did... I started taking notes of what everybody was saying to see if there was some common ground, some familiarity with how we think as people, male and female, and also in terms of our age, because we are all relatively in the same kind of roundabout age group. Um, so I've said like maybe from the age of 37 upwards we go. And um, so I wanted to see if there was any commonality and, and there was, uh, in terms of respect and trust, those were the two things that came up um, mm. more than anything else. 
um, it was respect and trust. And so, you know, we looked at the week before we looked at love languages and we looked at six, the six love languages, which um, touch is one, physical touch is one. Why are you calling me? Um, okay, physical touch, um, acts of service, quality time, um, words of affirmation, um, gifts, gifts, and the last one was distance. That's according to the book. But what was thrown out actually to me twice, I'm going to say this twice by men, this came to me, is that there should be another one. Patrick's laughing. <laughs> tool by men. That's what this dumb tool man that said it. And the, both of them said that the, there should be one. And we covered it on the relationship show that I do on Sunday. We covered it. This week, and that is set. And that is set. And one of the people, the people that, hold on, I mute somebody. The person that um, brought this up to me was actually the one who posed the question in the originally so I had somebody ask me and so I thought I would pose that to you guys um, and that's where the questions come from and his three was communication trust and honesty as one and the third one was sex the other person was um that brought the sex up was was ace um, I don't know if that's a, a, a man thing, but my question in, t in so moving from that is that it's a three part, right? It's a three part thing. And I want us to think about this as we are going and as we are looking for relationships is how important is sex to you within a relationship? That's the first part. And, and I should also add, when is it appropriate for sex? Because I know that when you are 20, 18, 25, you might have a different mindset. Now that we're moving on, we're older, and sometimes we're going into new relationships, it's kind of like awkward. Do you have the conversation? Do you not have the conversation? When do you have the conversation, if at all? So that's the first part of the question, right? And then I'm going to go around and see how you feel about it and then come back with part two of question one. All right. Is that everybody all right with that? And I am also going to go on to. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to go on to Facebook. And I think Ace wants to come on the show because I think he's calling. He wants to. so veronica's back yeah. in the room hello veronica how are you oh she's still getting on veronica can you hear me yeah i can hear you finally getting <laughs> How are you, my darling? I'm good. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Good to have you here again. I was just going through what we went through um, last week. Um, now, we, as I was explaining to the others, is that I, I was approached by two different men in terms of, we were looking at love languages the week before, and we had the question last week, what are the three most important um, things in a relationship to you and why, if you remember. And we went round yeah. notes from everybody just to see if there was any commonality. And, and there was trust, respect came up mostly. But the two, the two guys that I spoke to, both of them will admittedly said that they think that there should be a, another love language. And that love language is sex. And I said, it's funny. <laughs> It's funny how a two man come and, and, and bring that up to me. No, no, <laughs> to me. It's just demanding. <laughs> no, I'm playing with you, don't you? You know, 
<laughs> so, so yeah, so I wanted to bring that to the table, but I also wanted to bring to the table. Ah, oh, there it is. I was about to say Kelly on. I can't. I still can't find Facebook. Okay. 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 Hi, Shell. How are you doing? Hi, Barbara. How are you doing? Hi, guys. Herbert Burton. How are you doing? Those of you, uh, James Black. Thank you. Um, Tisha Braid. Thank you for being here, guys. Oh, there's fifty people on Facebook. Wonderful. 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 Okay. So. The question is, how important is sex to you in a relationship? So, uh, and, and how important is it for the relationship to work? Now, I want you to think about that because we are, most of us are singles. We've got, we've got our two married um, experts, should I put there, right, that are here to help. And the rest of us in the room are single. If you guys want to come into uh, the Zoom room, you are able to do so. Um, so also, so what I'm asking is how important is sex to you and also, um, when should it be introduced into the relationship? And that's based on us looking for love because we are here for a reason, right? Because we're single. We've got the two, two lovely married people in here, but we are all single looking for a relationship, looking for love. So when is it appropriate? Bearing in mind, we are like 37 years old upwards, right? We are not, we're not like, teeny boppers we we are mature people uh, when would that be introduced so who would like to go first i would can i go first is that eight uh, yes please i'm just plugging in my mic there we go um, right on all right perfect can you hear me yeah yeah can you hear me yeah all right so yeah. keeping it short and sweet just on the the language of sex, because it was something that I, I I brought up as, and I've and I and I declare this, Ace got to seventh language of love. It's not in the book. It's the one that I've I've coined the language of love, and I want to throw a few disclaimers out there. Firstly, the reason why I said sex is a language is because, like relationships, we all communicate differently, and you even in this this. This two hours, we're not going to be able to dissect the whole language in two hours because it's too long. But what I was just trying to highlight was the fact that men and women in relationships have a completely different view on sex. They, they view sex differently. And when you look at long-term relationships, because I've been speaking to a lot of married couples that have been in you know 30-year relationships, 20-year relationships, etc., you often find, and this is why I brought it up, that over long periods of time, sex becomes less important in the relationship for the woman, but it's still something that is very important for the man. And that can lead to all sorts of other relationships issues. And these are just the type of conversations that I've been having with people. Last point I want to make. Um, I was in the studio with a, a um, music studio with a group of young men, and we put on the um, love languages, me and Yvonne, because everywhere I go, I put it on just to get, get people's reactions. And that caused a big argument positively because I had young men saying that sex is not a language of love, which I found quite interesting. And they broke down the difference between making love and having sex. And I would agree, even though Ace called sex the language of love, my disclaimer is that I will agree. I used the, I used the, the sex as a language of love, but there is a massive difference between making love and penetration. You can make love to somebody without penetration. And that is a conversation I've had in the studio with young men today. And the woman came up to me after the show last week and she said exactly the same thing. She said, Ace, there's a massive difference between making love and sex. And so that's, that's how I just thought I'd open it up on that note. Good evening, everybody. Hi there. Um, Hi there. Can I I right, so guys, yeah, it is an interesting uh, point, but we are actually going into another direction. <laughs> but you've just come on, so you wouldn't have known that, Ace. So um, just to answer a question, we have a question from our Facebook, and it says, uh, Sprother Deep, isn't sex a part of touch? Right? 
No, uh, in, we, in a way, it's not. But it's not in, in terms of love, language, and touch. Touch is it's not connected to the sexual act. It is that embrace. It is the actual touch of a person so you're you're not feeling them up in a sexual way but you're touching them you know you get some people who are like touchy-feely they just like to touch you they might want to come and sit next to you and put their head under you and and all of that they are into you they want to touch you they want to feel you so that is what um that is what touch is and that's their way to connect um with their partner is touching um, we also have a comment from Simone Gordon who says, people think sex is important when they first get into a relationship until you get to know a person and get to know um, what's really important. Simone says, I agree, making love and sex are different. Tisha says, it's about connection. Absolutely. So what we want to know today is, right, so most of us, there's some of us in long-term relationships, some of us who are not in relationships. There are some who are married, right? What I want to know is how important is sex to you in a relationship, one, and two, when is it appropriate to introduce it? <coughs> in your partnership because remember we are all looking apart from those who are married we are looking for relationships so i want us to think that way to, so that this is effective so that we're learning something tonight so how important is sex to you right and and when is it appropriate those are the first two questions i've got another two questions for you on when is it appropriate to introduce it so um we've heard from ace who wants to go next kelly on your mic's not on so you might as well come yeah um let me just throw in a few things here yeah because um i i didn't i wasn't aware of two of the guys saying last week that, that they put sex in one of their three categories yeah uh, i can't even remember even ace saying anything uh, on that but no, he uh, did. this was sorry can i just clarify sorry to cut you um, this was after the fact. Um, I mentioned that Ace brought it up on the show on Sunday, on our show on Sunday. Oh, but okay. I had a conversation before any of this. So before okay. we had the conversation last week, I had a conversation with somebody. And the question was, what are the, the most important things uh, in a relationship and why? And to his response was communication, trust and honesty and good sex. So nobody else mentioned sex in, in yes, last week, nobody else. Then, because I never spoke to, to Ace about this, then Ace said he had the seventh one and didn't tell me until we were on the show and then mentioned sex. So there, it, then it made me start to think, okay, so there's two men, no, no, not saying that women wouldn't say that, but no woman has said that, it's just come from two men. That's just to clarify, on you go. Okay. Leon. okay. Well, I, I know there's there's five languages, right? What's the sixth one? Distance. Right. Okay. That's the first I've heard of that. Well, what's that about? Distance is where your one one or both partners need their space. They do not want to be right. So Kelly was looking what weird, but it is true that they. Well, so so that's a language. It is a language, yeah. Okay. Peace. Distance. Say again. Peace. Peace. No, oh, just distance. <laughs> well, it's distance, there's peace, isn't there? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, distance from the from the viewpoint of um needing your own space. So for instance, for somebody like me that has been single for a long time, it's quite busy, I it would be a lot for me to be with someone that's all over me all the time. Does that make sense? Okay. I would need space. So it might be the fact that I go upstairs. And that person's downstairs, but there's space. I don't need somebody that's under me all the time. Okay. So is that something that was made up from the group? Or? The actual person who um, wrote the book added that. Okay. okay. I wasn't so aware of that. It's actually a language of love. Um, right. According to that author. Yeah. Okay. Well, just one other quick thing, because um, the physical touch, um, even myself, I wasn't looking into the whole depth of that um obviously you actually explained physical touch being an whatever 
what came to me was um, loving it like Agape, Filio, Eros. Mm-hmm. Now that's that's not been spoken about on on this conversation. So you have the five languages of love, and then you have Greek mythology, you know, which speaks on those types of loves. So Agape, we know it's un, unconditional. Then you have Eros, um, which is the sexual. You have Filio, which is um, what do you call it? It's the friendship. Um, it's kind of close to what storages. I can't, I can't quite recall. So that's what came to me when you were talking about that with regards to putting sex in there. So that does actually make sense um, to actually put that in there uh, with regards to if, if they feel that that's, that's a language. Now, me personally speaking, and let's now talk about me. Um, I disagree that uh, well, not disagree with such. It was, you, you said that you are surprised that it's the men that have, that have come up with this, yeah. Um, yet, in in my experience um, of the activity, um, you know, obviously it's the men that's giving it. It's women that's actually receiving it, and you know, women are emotional creatures. So, how the, how a, a male's experience of sex is is different to a females especially if her psyche has got something to do with it, because obviously they're emotional. Um, for me, what's important, more say, uh, and sex is great, but it's intimacy, man. Me, I love intimacy. You know, um, someone said connection, and, some, and then obviously what Ace said, I know, I know Ace wants to talk in a moment, which is, which is cool. There's something different between uh, having sex and making love. Uh, and then to break it down now, because sex is an activity. That's what it is, and it's enjoyed by both. Because you know, when you when you think about it, men and women are the same in terms of you know, in the womb. Um, I can't remember the the, the names. Is it a, a, a embryo? Where it's it's now decided in the womb if it's going to become a male or female. If it's a if it's a male, it, you know, the sexual organs drop out. If it's female, it stays within. So, hey, we, we, we are the same. It's just that it's just with regards to where are the connectivity emotions are going to be, it's going to be outside, uh, which then that's where you've got, you know, terms like um, uh, when, uh, 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 yeah, paternal or maternal, you know, so you have these different words, internal, external. So you have these, these different words that would obviously come up. Yeah. Um, I find for myself, you know, intimacy, just that, um, female energy, um, which then obviously sexual energy comes into it. You know, that's that's what I love personally myself. So um, yeah, that's that's where I will stop there. Hey, can't hear you. We can't hear you. You can't hear me. Uh, I no, I can't hear me. I know you want to come in, but I want to give everybody a chance. Just to give ten seconds on intimacy. Just Listen. ten seconds, please, if you don't mind. I just want to say, Kels, we, I did cover that as part of this language of love as number seven. So I started with the activity. Then on our show on Sunday, we then dissected it and intimacy was part of it. So I'm glad you touched on that point. But because obviously this isn't my show, I'm being respectful and I'm talking very quickly. I'm making short points. But I started by call, calling the seventh language of love sex and then we broke that down and looked at what that looked like and part of that conversation that we had on our Sunday show was about intimacy and I'm agree- and I'm agree and I'm in agreement with you there's a big difference between the lustful act of sex and an intimacy so I'm 100% in agreement with you Kels thank you for that um Michelle God bless you cheers okay lovely thank you right so um who's coming in next with what they what did you actually answer the question though Kenil? Yeah. Um. I. So. So you're saying basically. Um. Was it? What's the question? What is sex? The question was, how important is sex to you? And when? It, when? When is it appropriate to bring it in? Uh, into. Look at the smile on your face. <laughs> 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 Wait. Okay. When is it appropriate to bring it in? <laughs> Okay, well, obviously, if you're in religion and you're Christian or whatever you are, you're supposed to wait, aren't you? You're supposed to wait a long time. You're supposed mm-hmm. to wait and wait for that final lovely day to come. Um, uh, and it's obviously something that you're looking forward to uh, because that is part of the act as well as the intimacy that will come with it. 
Um, so I think it just depends on where you're at on that um, on that conversation, really, because some people will be happy to do it on the first day. You know, if 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 the mood is right and you both connect and you, you both felt that it's drawing that way, then you would obviously you know do it on that day. If not, you'll wait until the actual day of your matrimony, and then you'll do it then. Um, have I answered the question? Can't we hear Yvonne again? Okay, I'm gonna make a note and say uh, and say how many people are saying on the day or people are saying wait because I'm gonna come in after with things something to summarize that. All right, so you're saying now. So I'm not talking about anyone else. This is you, how you feel. If, so are you saying that's, if a, you, bit, that's a bit personal? Man. <laughs> Please. All right, is that too much for you to answer? Yeah, I think that's a that's a personal thing. You know, um, I, 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 this okay. This is how I would answer it. This is how I'd answer it. Mm -hmm. uh, if I meet a young lady and we connect, and it was it just felt boy, this is some nice connection here, and it went that way. it went that way. Okay, cool. All right. You go, so you go by the feeling of how you feel. Yeah. Lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lovely. Okay, who wants to come in? Who wants to come in next? Somebody said, Grace is saying wait with capital letters. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right, Grace. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Come and sweep it off your feet. Next minute, you know, you're just on it. <laughs> and, 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 and let me say this very quickly because there's this thing where like men want it more than women that's nonsense they both want it as much as each other and and if anything woman more because a woman can go on and on and on and man is like boy please come back please come on man you know what i mean because boy i need to you know you know what i'm saying so hey it's i think it's like once you with a woman this is one of my experience once that pandora box is open and you open it, you best make sure, best make, make sure you make good of that box, because, hey. So that's my thing, is that they, they, they shit with this thing of like, men want it more than, nah, equally, they both equally want it. That's why they're both equally coming together, right, to actually meet and do what they're doing together, because they both want to. It's just, yes, Grace is saying to wait. Really? Yeah, I think it's a thing where if it's, if it's going a certain way and it goes that way, it, it has gone that way. Yvonne, what's happening? I keep forgetting to unmute myself. It's only because I could hear some feedback and I wasn't sure whether it was coming from me. So I just put everybody on mute. Okay, so Simone Gordon says, you can find someone and make them wait months and it doesn't work and then find someone and all your rules go out the window. Connection is key. Thank you for your comments, Simone. Thank you so much. And she's got two likes. People are liking that. Uh, hold on. Let's have a look. I can see any more. That's it. I can't see any more here right okay so um who's going next with their opinion who's going next up oh, ruth is there okay ruth let's bring you in okay hey, can you hear me yeah I can hear you loud and clear nice one yeah so with the question yes sex is very very important the connection um the learning about each other's likes and desires and all those types of things i think that's really important sometimes like you mentioned a couple of weeks ago just because you do something with one person doesn't mean that's what you bring into that kind of relationship people like different things and i think we've got to recognize we're in the 21st century we are exposed to a lot more information we probably see or hear and talk with our girls and our guys on things that we like um for me i think it's about feeling connected to that person if i'm going to engage and being comfortable and it being the right thing um to engage in that in sexual activity and and it may start off at first as just 
sex. It's not going to be always a deep, meaningful interaction in the first instance, but it's enough to know that, you know, this is, you're in a relationship or you, you have a desire to be with someone and that you want to take it further. And it's the journey. I think a sexual life is a life on its own. Um, there are ups and downs. There are times, especially like for women, I'm getting to a stage where my, my appetite has really changed a lot. That I'm surprised by myself. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If I say to my friends, oh, I haven't had sex in such and such a time, they were like, what, really? Yeah. So, Because I'm not in a relationship. So if I'm not in a relationship, I'm just not interested. Okay. So. Okay. And so, so you're saying that when the, the appropriate time is when you feel connected. Mm. And, and, and could that be at any time? Yeah, it could be because like, you know, you meet people like, say, for example, internet dating, dating on the internet, whatever. You go from the chatting on the, the app to either sharing your personal contact details. You, you're having conversations, isn't it? You're either going to know a connection or you're not. You get to the point where you're going to meet. It, this is not happening overnight. It's not like to say you met them yesterday and now you're in my yard today. You, there is a there is a period of time, right? Um, and and then you know if you meet on that day, it's not necessarily yeah that's going to happen. But I suppose for me right now, the roof that's sitting here right now, she's not on it. But the roof a few years back, <laughs> different kind of woman. And then, so I have to add this, sometimes people make requests, because I heard someone say, women receive, mm -hmm. men put out, where there's a lot of men out there that are wanting to receive. I'll just leave it like that. should have just went there you go I just dropped it I just dropped it just like that okay <laughs> I'm not going to come in because we will be covering that we'll be covering that a little bit later on down the line <laughs> we've got some some responses from the Facebook <laughs> it's going off on Facebook it is going off and Tisha's like oh wow yeah everyone is like yeah facebook's going crazy <laughs> anyway so okay so we know that that's how you see things i have to put my glasses on right okay shell shell williams says and summers is going to be in business for a long time and uh, um shell the sex toy business has gone up by 70 percent in lockdown then everything's changed Right, that's 70, not 17, 17, 70, 70%. And Summers, as a matter of fact, closed down a lot of their stores. Mm -hmm. Now, well, they've done the right thing because now you can get everything online. So whatever it is that you need, you desire everything you want, you can get front and Summers. Yvonne, yeah. out of that 70% of the sex toys, what, do you know what particular toys they are selling? No, no, I don't, because it, that's not just for Ann Summers, that's in general. Because I'm wondering if it's like a lot of more dildos, or if it's butt plugs, or if it's strap-ons, or if it's any of those types of things. Because you know, there are some single men out there, and they are trying to do the lockdown in their own way. Yeah, they are. And, and they're buying toys, and it's not dolls. No. No, I know. Oh, so I, I saw a video and I was like, I don't understand why I got this video. I had to turn it off. But anyway, <laughs> anyway. But yeah, that's actually, I'll do a little bit of research. I'm going to do a little bit more research to find out what toys in particular. So, okay, evening all. Hi, Tony, how you doing? How comes you on Facebook? Are you coming in the room? It's on the thread. Um, right, time to... <laughs> okay. Um, Grace Campbell says, to make love to me, you have to 
be worth my emotional investment and my friend. I get that. Okay. Oh, Tony Cox is saying, receive what? So we are talking a, a little bit. We're just part, uh, brisking on uh, sex. And what was said is that men project, women receive. That's where you, that where you must have heard the receive from. But we're, we're not emphasizing so much on the act, but when is it appropriate? How important is sex to you in your relationship and how appropriate is it? When is it appropriate to bring it in? So I'm gonna bring in um, brother, Mr. P, as he looked like he's ready to come in. Good, e good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, good evening. Everybody, everybody looking Chris. <laughs> right. Um right for me, for me, it's um it was love at first sight, as I said already. But um I'm one of the guys that waited. So I waited two years. I waited two years for the lady, and it never stopped after that. So so we've just been in love all the time. There's no arguments, no, 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 I've got a headache, or none of them sort of things, you know? Because you're going to say none of them foolish, none of that foolish. Yeah, what, yeah, what, eddie no, 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 no. Yeah, we just, when we, when we want to, we do it, whatever. But it took us like two years, and why it took us two years is because I just wanted to wait on her, you know? I just wanted to be married, and then, and then we get on with our life. I never wanted to be messing about with her. And then accidents happen. And if an accident happened, that's, that's, it's not the way we want it to be. And it's not the way our, our my, my, my father brought me up to be, you know, I was, he's always wanted me to wait. I waited, I waited okay. two years and it was worth the two years waiting. I know some people, some people, um, I mean, if I wasn't married or well, wasn't, I never had it in mind to get married. If I never had it in mind to get married, it might have been a different ball game. But um, from ever since I was 16 mm -hmm. and I met the, the lady and I met her and I was riding my bicycle and while she was walking, I never had no car, no car. See, I'll demand them have a car, not have a, have a girlfriend in car. We never had no car to have a girlfriend in car um, and it wouldn't work. But the way it worked is I waited and then everything went smoothly. No arguments about sex. Sex is not a is not a barrier. And it should never be a barrier in a in um in a in a girlfriend and boyfriend thing. It shouldn't be. But if you mess about out there, you're gonna get trapped. Because you're not gonna know who is who. Sometimes these men are just running after women to get what they get. When they get it, they're gone. You know? He said the man has got to be the one to know. But both of them together, both man and woman, both of them together, have to do this thing together. So to, it's a together thing. The feeling, the touching, whatever, but it's a together thing. It's not a just one-sided thing. If she said no, if she said no, she mean no. He's got to take that and say no. She says no, it's no. If, he, okay. if he's not the man that's going to buy flowers and nice her up and treat her good, then, you know, but my, my, th my thing is men, you wait, you know, maybe it's too late for some men now to wait, but if you wait from day one, from years younger, if you waited on the, on the lady, that's going to be your lady, you'd have been all right. Everything will be all right. Okay. And you don't look at the woman and say, that should be the woman. You stick to your woman and that's it. You know, you stick to the woman all the time, no matter what. You've got a lot of love going on here, Patrick, because one's saying, yeah, the, the women just love you. They're, they're, you're right, them just love you. They said, um, <laughs> uh, when I get married, then we will talk about it. Love you, Patrick. That's from Grace. To, uh, Barbara's saying tonight, it's giving me pure jokes. It's giving me pure jokes too. And um, Carol's saying, yes, Mr. P, but not everyone is the same and times have changed. Okay. You can come in later there, um, Carol. Um, teacher saying, yeah, times have definitely changed. It's a shame. Um, Mr. P, you are one of a kind, says Shell. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Barbara's saying, I applaud you, Patrick. Old school gent right there. Absolutely. Uh, but Tisha saying, yeah, barrier to entry. I put sex is not a barrier. Barrier to e entry. Um, Grace is saying um, she agrees with you. And Tisha says that's a problem. You know, when you said some men will go and get it and then they're gone. She said that's the problem. They get it and then they're gone. OK, guys, keep the comments coming. Keep the comments coming. Ace, you want to come in? Yeah, um, here. I haven't really expressed my thoughts on this particular subject, so I'm just going to give you where I'm at. And it's got to remember, I'm a thought provoker, so I say things to spark thoughts in the minds of people that are listening. So, in relation to when is there a good time to have sex, what I think is equally as important is why you're having sex. Because in relation to those last few questions about men having sex and going, um, what I think what happened, we covered this on our show on, on Sunday as well, is that people have sex for different reasons. So example, you can have a couple, just man and woman, doesn't matter which way around it goes, just use the analogy, a man and a woman, and they start seeing each other. And for one person, sex is now, uh, uh, it's, it's a level up. It's now we're going to get more intimate. So we're having sex as part of making this relationship more intimate but for the other person it might just be viewed as a sexual act and that can lead to a lot of confusion in and a lot of heartbreak so i think it's not really important that it's not only when you have sex there's a clear understanding why you're having sex because i i example i'll just leave an example if two people have sex very early in the relationship Oh, so we're very early in the, 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 the meeting of each other without forming that relationship and that bond. Like I said, this sexual act can be misinterpreted on both parts. So that's my answer. I just thought I'd put that out there to spark some thought. But before you go, Ace, can you just say, uh, with the one night in, in, your, in your mind, is in terms of when is it appropriate? Is it on the same day or do you say after the connection? I would say, once again, it depends on the understanding because if you go to a nightclub and you're having a few drinks and you and you start dancing with a lady and there's some high sexual chemistry there and you know it could be interpreted and understood by both parts that we're going to leave here to have a one night. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I, I, I'm not promoting one night, so I'm just giving you that analogy. So I would say it's all about the chemistry between the two individuals and when it's mutual consent when two when two mutually consent in adults both mutually consent that's the right time so if that if that if that be if that is after meeting up after a few hours or if it takes a few weeks or a few months it's down to i'd say when two when, when's the right time when two mutually mutually consent in partners consent that's when the right time would be but I, I, that's it yeah Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Right, so who's coming in next? Thank you Ace for your, the reason why I'm asking uh, about um, when is it appropriate, I'm actually making a note and just to see where we're at, what comes out of it, the statistics from this show, how people are feeling. So if I can get a clear um, on the day's fine or um, connection sometime after, if I can get that, it will just help me to, to get these stats right. Okay, so who's going next? Oh, um, we did have a comment from Francois, and she said, in my experience, um, uh, my experience has been that a man with marriage in mind is prepared to wait. I agree with the speaker, and, I, and I'm assuming that is um, Patrick, that's yours, because uh, obviously Patrick was wild. Right, so France says, I agree that it's important to wait for as long as possible. Agree with the previous speaker. Um, I've been told by men that sex too early in a relationship alters the man's mindset towards the woman from, from, from being a potential wife to a sexual partner as long as it lasts. That is a really good point because I have had men tell me the same thing, Francois. That when it's when you give it up too quickly, he leaves quickly. Yeah. Uh, perhaps, uh, ooh, Can I just say something? Yeah. How old is this man? We're talking. We're, well, we're talking about. Remember, I was saying we're going from about thirty-seven upwards. 
because we're, we're catering for the people in the group, maybe 40 upwards, but I know that we have some slightly younger ladies here around that yeah. right? I think I, I, would, I would agree if you're in your 20s, maybe early 30s, but after a certain time, I mean, especially with, I don't think anybody just come together and just have sex just like that. Um, I think, as Ace was saying, there's a connection, there's a chemistry, you know, every woman, not every woman, sorry, I'd say majority of women, before they would even have a date with a guy or see a guy, they already like if it's their career, uh, if it's their status, there's something that's actually attracted them towards that person, that they think that person is decent enough. And if they have it on that night, it's because they just liked each other and they just had it, because they've already had the experience of that. And the same likewise with a man, that if he likes that woman and respects that woman, then he's going to do so. If it's just a fling, it's just a fling. Because some women just see it as an anyway. They just move on. So, yeah, things have moved on. Things have changed. But, but that's a quite a general um, sweet statement there. I wouldn't say that is really the case. If you're younger, fine. But anything after 37 over, I wouldn't say that is the case. Okay. And you're basing that from yourself, right? Um, I would go according to intelligence I think, I, think, I think a certain point you know you should know better you know you should, just, you should know better but right, it doesn't mean that 37 you mm -hmm. that's that's the that's a good age that's a person that's full on in their career that's a that's a person that has had ups and downs experiments stuff mortgage you know maybe the first maybe maybe didn't work out Okay, well here, well here, um, well here, um, she says, sorry. Right, so yeah, right, so what Francois says, I think that I, I do, I do agree. I do agree to an extent, I do, I have to agree, um, from being on the receiving end, not the receiving end, as, as it sounds, but, you know, there are, I think there are some of us who recognise the signs of men who are just on it for being on its sake, the, and, and they are grown men, they are grown men, big man, they still behave like that, they do. Um, it does. Yeah. It takes, it takes two. You know, yes, it not, does. It does. Yeah, it does. It does. It does too. The statement was what the yeah. statement he made was. She said, "Is that if sex is too early in a relationship, it alters the man's mindset towards the woman as a potential wife." That was the statement that was made. Uh. And, and I, I've heard this. That's not the first time I've heard this. I've actually heard men say that. I've heard many men say that. Look, I have to jump in, I have to jump in there to, feel, to defend Kelly on, because I like the fact that he, he comes with... No, you don't him. have to jump in, because I'm still talking. Hello. I'm a man, and he's right. No. no. You can't, no, 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 you can't just jump in, jump in. I'm still talking. Thank you. Right, so... So what I'm saying is, this is a statement that was made, and I'm saying to you as a woman, because... I get you, you're coming from a male perspective, but as a woman, listening to men, how they talk, and I've heard men say, I'm not saying that all men are the same, but what I heard you say was the younger men, yes, but the older men, no. I know big grown men that do that stuff. Can I, can I say something now, please? Yeah. Thank you. Um, what... Uh what I heard Kelly on clearly say, and I'm not, I'm going to paraphrase it not as well as he does, is it takes two to tango. Now, when we're talking about, like you just said in your words, Yvonne, grown men, they're not sleeping with little children, so they're sleeping with grown women. And I, and I really resent the fact that you said that Kelly on is coming from a male perspective, because personally, I'm not coming from a man or a female perspective. Um, we're just talking and we're having a conversation. So it's, 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 a bit, um, it's a bit hostile to say, well, you're coming from a man perspective. Uh, no, it's not a man, it's, um, it, we're just talking on another. I don't think it's hostile though. I don't, I don't think that's been hostile because he's a man, I'm a woman. That's, that, that is his water to 
You've you can only, hold on one minute. One minute. One minute. You I can only come and you can only judge something by your own standard. Well, that's, no one yeah, that's it. That's exactly so, hold on. Hold on. So as a man, he's talking from a male perspective because he is a man. No. I am talking from a female perspective from what I have experienced. No, 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 so no. That is what I'm saying. But we are not here to have this discussion, Ace. We're having a discussion. I've read out a statement. Okay, can we can I move and on? I'm and make my clearing point? up the statement. Can I move on and make my point? So just for You've the record, already made your point. I haven't. We, I was just clear, I haven't, I haven't. So just for the record, I personally, I, I, I'm very well trained at removing myself emotionally from situations and speaking from an unbiased perspective. So right now, everything I say is not from a man or a female perspective, it's from a perspective of, of, of someone just giving my opinion. So I'll make that clear. So back to what Kelly Owens was saying, and I and I, and I, I felt the need to just um, agree with him that if you're sleeping with men, and I'm not, I'm not I don't want to, I don't want to come out like this, but what I'm saying is it takes two to tangle. So what we, if you're, if you're, if you find yourself continuously getting into situations whereby you know men are you know not hanging around long, maybe you need to start looking at the types of men, men that you're, you're possibly dating. Mm. as opposed to just putting the blame on the other side and just my one last point i want to make as a man now i'm speaking as a man from a male perspective i disagree with the statement where um that, that if you if a woman gives it up quite quickly they don't make a good wife because i have been in all different types of relationships i've been in relationships where we've where we've met and we've ripped each other's clothes off quite quickly and those relationships have lasted just as long as the relationships where I've waited. So now speaking from a male perspective, I'm going to say I disagree with that statement. And, it's, and that statement is completely rubbish that if a woman gives it up quickly, she doesn't make a good wife. And that's, and that's, it's got talk. But it wasn't said that she doesn't make a good wife. No, it was, it was, it was said. I it was said. what I said. It was. What the statement said was, I have been told by men that sex too early in a relationship alters the man's mindset towards the woman from being a potential wife. Can you clarify what alters the, alters the mind? That's the same thing. Alters the mind to be a potential wife. To, to a sexual partner for as long as it lasts. This is what this is what Francois has said in her experience, right? And that's her experience. And what I'm saying. In my experience, I've experienced the same thing. So what I am saying is, regardless of what you say, I'm holding this because I've experienced it in the same way. Men have told me, I've got loads of male friends and they've said the same thing. So we can say that people are different and people handle things differently. And there are some men that see it that way and there are some men that don't, okay? So moving on, right. So, uh, where are we? There's, oh, right. So, Shell Williams says, some men get are getting older, but not growing up. And that might be in her experience. Tisha saying, also, I feel it puts me off to when they pursue it relentlessly. Right. So, let me, get, let me clear this up. Let me just say what this is. This question is this. How important is sex to you in a relationship? That's the first question. And the second question is, when is it appropriate to introduce sex into the relationship? Now, I am running a poll here. And the poll is saying, because it was mentioned that one night is okay for one, if you, if you feel the connection on the first night, that's okay. And then on the flip side of that, I was heard, connection later when you have connection but you introduce sex later so what i am asking you to do is being honest so that we can get the stats so that we've got a benchmark because this is important to know how people are feeling what people think and what people's experiences are because you got to remember guys most of us here are single looking for love and these questions are designed to help us make right choices okay 
So now that, because I know that some guys have come in late, some guys are just starting, so they don't know exactly what the questions was, the question was and why. So now that you see the open, the blanket, you can see everything for what it is. This is why we're asking the question. So we're gonna go to Veronica now, who is married. And Veronica is gonna, Veronica is going to give us her perspective. Goodness. <laughs> Sorry, I was just telling something. I was just telling something there. Where is it all? Yeah, you're on. You're on. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean, right? Basically, let me uh, let me say because I was just texting there to you just not to, to you just now. Um, back on the point where you are were talking about waiting, and not I mean first night waiting whatever. But from my own experience in New York, really bother not. I did not wait, and I'm this is 21 years that I've with my partner still. So it worked for some people, and it don't work for some people. So. But right now in this society and stuff, I think people should wait because people just come with all sweet talk and think and things, and then you think that you go into a relationship and then the next couple of weeks you don't give it yourself to the person, the person gone along. So sometimes it's best to be and know the individual, know where they want, where they're heading, and if you fit to stay with them, well, stay with them. But from as I say, from my own experience, from my background. In my past, wasn't really perfect, but then when I met my husband, and this and it happened because he was on vacation, we was on vacation, we met in Barbados. You know what I'm saying? So that was a thought that was like a difference because he coming back to England like in Barbados is it going to work? All these things was going through my head. Is he going to remember me when he get back to England? And so it worked out that he remembered me when he get back to England. Twenty one years after we still together, so. That's my bit. So it worked for you? It worked for me. Okay, so I'll put the, on the day. Okay, thank you. And thank you for your honesty. Francois, are you ready to come in? Are you ready to come in? Francois, are you there? Okay, I'll, re I'll read some comments out. Um, Brother Deep says, where have you gone? I think Ace is talking about casual sex, it depends. Yeah, I think Ace is talking about casual sex. It all depends on the mindset of the couple. And uh, Ace is saying, there's a lot of grown males out there, does not mean they are men. That's true, very true. So how does somebody, not just anybody, how do you know, is this discussion regarding dating as singles? Oh, we have a question from Daniel Brown. Is this discussion regarding dating as singles? Yes, it is in regards to dating as singles. Um, Daniel Brown is married, so you can give a perspective from a married point of view then, Daniel, um, in terms of the question was, how important is sex in a relationship? And when is it appropriate to introduce it into that relationship? And we are talking, because most of us on this line are single. Uh, looking for partnerships, yeah, or, or relationships. Right, so Shell Williams says, sex is very important when married, in my opinion, sex once during during weekdays, three times a week or on week, or weekends. Is that you giving a specific time to have sex, um, Shell? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, Lorraine saying, sex is extremely important to her, but I have to have a deep emotional attachment with you as once we sleep together, for me, I see that as an exchange of energy. We are then exchanging pieces of each other and I can't do that with anybody. Uh, emotional before we sleep together, I meant to say, sorry. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Simone Gordon is saying, sex is a big thing in a relationship, but a man has to stimulate my mind before touching my body and brother, Deep said, so kiss my neck. There you go. Um, so we're hearing, we're hearing lots and lots of different thoughts here. Um, okay, so who hasn't been? Who hasn't? Uh, Lorraine? By the way, uh, Francois's microphone isn't working. I think she wrote something in the chat box. Oh, okay. So Francois, are you going to type then? I think she typed in already. Okay. She said, there's always an exception. I believe 
in love at first sight and agree with the speaker. Current society indicates that waiting is far safer for both parties, male and female, who are looking for something more meaningful. Um, yeah, okay, thank you for that. Okay, thank tell, you. Tell Francois, if she logs out the Zoom and logs back in, she should be able to reconnect to her audio. Sometimes it's when you're logging in. So she disconnects the Zoom and then logs back in, her audio should work. Okay, thanks for that, Ace. Yeah. Right, so Herbert, Burton, who's new. Thank you, Herbert. Thank you for joining us this evening. Herbert Burton says, some ladies don't find out any background about the person they're about to have early sex with. And I'm afraid to say there are men out there who are habitually just sexing ladies and moving on. Brilliant. Brilliant. Background. Do your background. Do your background. background check. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why I'm saying... I want to know who who is willing, and and me. I'm not. I, I want to be clear. I'm not sitting on a on a as on a, a thing of judgment. I just want to know where people's minds are at, where what you're thinking, what how you process this, in terms of being single. Because sometimes you know we think we've got it right, and because some of us have been single for a long time, we think, oh, maybe if I do something differently, it might change the outcome. So I'm just looking at what the stats are saying here. Um, Lorraine Bailey, yes, because once we sleep together, I'm sleeping with all your past partners too. Oh, drop the mic, Lorraine. Absolutely. So we're going to, we're going into the second, we're already in the second hour. Got time to go really quickly this evening. Right, that's one of the things that we want to, I want to bring up in terms of, has everybody spoken? No, Carol. Carol Lorraine, do you want to come in and give your two pence worth it? Do you want to come in, Carol Lorraine? I'll come back in a minute. In a minute, I would have moved on. Oh, okay. Um, uh, to me, sex, sex. I I wouldn't go straight into sex. It's it's not. I I I would like to wait, but then I think it. And as, as it's been said before, it's all about connection as well. Um, it's how you connect with that person. Um, but me personally, I'm looking for a long term relationship, so I wouldn't really want to jump into sex straight away. Um, but. I suppose it depends, it all depends on how you connect with that person. If you've had a conversation, how that conversation has gone. Um, and uh, I think sometimes it's all about mindset as well with yourself. So um, me personally, I wouldn't rush into it, but at the end of the day, you know, you can never say never sometimes. You know, um, if, if you're going into something, I'm, I'm, I'm an older person now, so I've had experience in the past. And um, I think me personally now, I'm looking for something long term. So I wouldn't really want to jump into sex straight away, me personally. And, and as Lorraine says, it's like, you know, you, you jump into it and then, you know, you don't know, you don't know what other women that person's been with just before you or anything like that so you know you have to and and also as um herbert says as well you, you have to find out where they're coming from and you know where they've been so to speak you know before you get into that situation yeah so yeah that's that's what i feel anyway thank you lorraine thank Ooh. you Colin. Thank you for your comment. Um, the, the, the Facebook feed is popping tonight. Um, Brother Deep was saying to Lorraine's comment, very true, but the vast majority of people don't understand this. Sex is just recreational, um, a pastime or, or a goal to be reached. Okay, and Teacher Bray says, yes, I tried a new thing and it's still the same shit. So I kind of guess that's from doing something different. Carol, can you? Mute yourself, thank you very much. Right, so we've got a new listener here, D Garvey. Hello, guys. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. D Garvey's saying, if I'm Michelle, I cannot sleep with randoms at all. Friendship has to come first. And then Daniel has come back in with a, a, a comment. He says, right, 
he's been married for 31 years this year and I feel sex is important but making love regularly is crucial as the experience of making love doesn't just exist in the bedroom however personally would wouldn't have sex outside of marriage as that's my personal belief thank you for that that and and I like the way that you put in um that it doesn't have to just exist in the bedroom Yvonne, can I quickly say this? Yeah. So I'll, I'll be reading the thread as well. And there's women on the thread that are making it very, very clear that sex is very important to them. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to, I think Ace is trying to make this point as well. It's just not this whole male thing. But that's that not what the thing said. That's why I'm saying that. That's not what it's, you guys have misinterpreted what was said. No, we're not. It's not about, it's not about, if it's male or just women or men that want sex, we 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 do want sex. The women are saying that. <laughs> of course, we think it's important. <laughs> so can I just interject there? So no, because <laughs> we're moving on. I can't get a ten seconds. I can't get a ten seconds just to say. Hence, why I said that sex is the seventh language of love because I identify we all communicate that language differently. And this whole conversation is demonstrating that. And all the comments that everyone's putting in about intimacy, sex not just being in the bedroom, making love, everything, every comment that everybody puts in clarifies my point, which I made, which is sex is the seventh language of love. Right, what's the tens? What's the tens? What's the hands for? Ten. Tens. Tenth language of love, come in, Veronica. Can you give me be a joke? Yeah, come in, Veronica. Right, I'm done. But yeah, that's my point. Where is the ten? Right, right. We're not the seven, eight, nine, hand ten. Yeah, is that what she's saying? I'm new. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm new. saying um, sex is the seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth language of love. Yeah. No, what I was saying. Your ten seconds is up. Veronica, <laughs> 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 oh, I love you. Love you, like this. Love, you. Thank you. love you all, guys. Love you guys. <laughs> oh, okay, so right. Yes, I don't think that there's a dispute that we that we don't want sex. We do want sex. The question is, is how important is it? in a relationship and when to bring it in to the relationship. Gosh, my eyes are getting really bad. Right. <laughs> okay, it's a, um, oh. Rachel Grant says, Ace behave. You you guys, Ace, you are the man you know. The people them are loving you on here. Right, so Carol Lorraine is saying, no one is saying that love, sex isn't important. It is, but we all have different feelings about sex or um, when to introduce it. Teacher Braid says, of course you ask all the questions. Take your time, get to know the months, but you might be waiting. You might be waiting months, but it seems like it's a goal. I think, you know, I'm not going to make any assumptions. From, from what I'm reading. But it is very, very close in terms of what you guys are saying, in terms of when is the appropriate time to introduce sex. Um, it's neck and neck, actually. It's 4-4. Four, four. So it's, I think that connection, um, the overall thing, the overall word that has been said this evening is connection and even on the one night stand, if you feel connected, then you'll do it. But from what the feed says, and I think it's mostly females, that from what I'm reading, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, but what I'm reading on the feed is that the women would rather wait before having sex. And that's not saying wait until marriage, but it, they would rather just wait to get to know the person a little bit better. That's what I'm gleaning from the group. Is that true or not? Yeah, it's true. Okay. It's true. There's, you're supposed to wait a little while. I know, I know some of these men are hot. These men are hot and they can't wait. They see the woman, they go, they go to the nightclub and they see the woman 
and she she just looked nice. Oh no, 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 no. Sorry, Mr. No, P. No, these men are hot. Mr. P, no, sorry. Sorry. Told, I, hey, I am... you know, should I tell you something, young man? <laughs> I think of me as I'm 21, right? Mr. P, 20. No. 20 years old, <laughs> right? And not and I'm waiting on the lady, and I'm a 20-year-old. And I'm a 20 years old. I'm not talking about what when I'm when I'm 60, I'm talking about when I'm 20, I'm waiting on the lady. And you're and you're not 20, are you? No, I'm 44 this year. That's what I'm saying. You're, you're an old man, different. With the older man, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> now, now hold on, hold on. This once but, again, there, there's a young boy, different, didn't it? Okay, on the thread, it's agreed that women are saying that they would rather wait. Yes, that's definitely the case. There are some men that are happy to wait as well. For real. Okay, right? And there are some women that just want to have it now. So I think we need to kind of like, I'm talking about generalizing. We, we kind of need to be careful about that because there's some women that just enjoy sex. Mm -hmm. They just enjoy it. There isn't a thing of, it's not a thing like there's something wrong with them. They just like sex. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah. That's the I'm making, and then it, it seems to be a thing where there's something wrong with men. No, you know? no, that's not what we're saying. That's not oh. what we're saying at all. Well, yeah, but that's, that's not what I'm saying. saying. Oh, nothing wrong with the men. And man, man, man. man. No, no, that's, 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 not not right. that's it's not a, what I'm it's a together thing, isn't it? It's a together thing. It's not a, it's not a thing that is just man. It's a together thing. You mm. can't do that, the woman. Yeah. But you have to wait on her. It's best to wait on her for when she's ready. And she should wait on him as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait yeah, yeah. the first, is what I'm saying to you. Yeah, I think, I think, I think to 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 clarify what was said is this: the statement was made that from an experience of talking to different men, this is what was said, and I'm confirming what the young lady said as yes I have also met many men who have said the same thing which means that there is something that generally there are some men who look at women less than if women give it up too early they look at women less than and they are less likely to see that woman as their potential wife, partner, or whatever or not. Now, if, if I have experienced that, another woman has experienced that, and another woman has experienced that, nobody can say no. So, because by saying no, that's wrong, you're actually devaluing the experience that someone's, someone else has had. There is no wrong or right to this. Everybody has their own experience. And you can only go by the experience that you have had. You can only judge something by your own standard. You cannot do it by anybody else's. So therefore, this is me explaining this to you again. That's, so it's, it wasn't an infringement against men at all. What was clearly, and what I'm trying to say and communicate with you is that the young lady made a statement to what she had experienced. And I've said, I have also experienced the same thing. Therefore, it can't be, we don't know the same people. There's two people out of eight billion. There's eight billion people in the world. But there's not just, it's not just us. It's not just me that's experienced it. It's not just Francois that's experienced it. But, but you cannot, hold on Ace, you cannot sit there and devalue what somebody is no saying. Because that is their experience. But where you went wrong, where you went wrong is after you gave the example, you said, I listened carefully, you said, this now me. And up to that point, you were fine. You said, this is the experience, but you can't say it means. It, what it means is based on the people you've spoken to. Based that's on what, but that is what's been said. Oh, right. No, no, no. Ace, you're, you're taking this well out of context to win an argument that has no winner. That's, that's where it is. And we are moving on with the show because this is not what it's about. It is correct. Right? No, it's not. It's not what it's about, Ace. So please let the show go on, Ace. Thank you. Right. Okay. So we're moving on with the show.
Right. So Tisha says, sex is the last thing I want when building a building up a new relationship. So again, it's the the well for Tisha, it's about relationship. That's what it's about. And so, but like we said on here, most of the women on here are saying that they they would prefer to wait. The men are not on here. I don't know because I haven't seen. I know that Kelly on has said, oh. Daniel Brown says, I just want to clarify the difference between sex and making love. Making love is an holistic action as it is threaded through everything we do. Sex then will become the cherry on the top. Hence why sex can be quite an empty relief. And that's what Daniel Brown says. The rain baby said, I'd rather wait. I'm 47 years old and I've had I never had a one night stand and never had sex without with somebody want just once. That's that's oh thank you for that comment, Lorraine. Herbert is saying, oh hold on before I go to um Herbert, I'm gonna come to Tisha Bray. She said set things too early messes things up for it messes up both people's minds when you have sex too early. Women and women, Tisha says women put up with shit. Okay. But guys, when you're putting up your bits on the feed, because sometimes we're, there is a delay, there is a delay on the show. So when you are putting your comments on the thread, can you just add a little bit more in so that we understand what, from what perspective you are talking? Right. Herbert Burton says marriage in regards to sex doesn't always change people's attitudes or behavior commitment to each other is more important i know couples that are not married but have a healthy sexual relationship the waiting thing is okay but some men will hang around but some men will hang around and wait and i think that that's it's an important things it's important to know that both parties can and do wait there are some women who do want sex early and there are men who want it equally and like we discovered earlier on in the conversation that it's it's a connection thing it's where you two come together and you make a decision of what you want to do all right my thing is in terms of a long-term relationship and this is advice that i've had from men right from men from my male friends and in if you want a long-term relationship with a guy wait that's the advice from i would say the majority of my male friends wait let make him wait and i'm also going to solidify this with something else there's been many many books and we've got many many authors around and one of the one of the biggest um selling books on relationships is act like a woman think like a man right and in that the and i'm not saying i'm not saying it works and i'm not saying it it doesn't what i'm saying is is that men have <clears throat> historically given women advice to wait right to wait 60 days 90 days how many a days how many days but they've said, don't give it up on the first date, right? And this is something that's habitual. A lot of men, I'm not saying every man, but I'm saying a lot of men have said that. And they've said that to many women. So I just want to put that out there because I know that, I know Kellyon and Ace probably disagree with that from your facial expressions. I can see, even though I've got no glasses on, um, from your facial expressions that you, you don't, believe that to be true but this is what's come from men this is what's come from them. Enough, what i believe to be true from my facial expressions what i don't believe to be true which i'm making clear is that we're what we're doing here is we're making a, a, a we're put we're making a connection between the time frame in which someone has sex and how long the relationship lasts and i'm an intellectual, so I'm an intellectual conversations and i'm making it clear that you can't put a time frame between how long someone has had waits to have sex and how long the relationship will have lost what's important and i've stated this time and time again is the relationship yeah, and it, it, it's the more solid and uh, the connection, and that's what the other six languages of love actually deal with is 
the communication and the understanding. And if you understand and you have that connection, right? Whether you wait, you can wait two months, six months, it doesn't matter. The, the relationship becomes solid. And, I, and we're mixing the sex together. And just talking about if you speak with someone quickly, that means the relationship doesn't last. That's rubbish. There's people that have met each other in, in a nightclub, had they started off as a one night stand and get married and had kids and, and, and yeah. listen, after. So that's my point. But please, in future, when you are making reference to my facial expression, don't tell me what I then I must believe because of the facial expression. It's better to ask me the question and then I can tell you. What Thank I you, think, Ace. Yeah, Thank just very quickly. And, just hold on, quickly. Before, before, I, before, before I let you come in, I'm just gonna say this. I am reading your body language, all right? So, I've said from both of your facial expressions, from what I see, it looks like. That's what I said. So don't take my words out of... Look, this show is not about you and me. This show is about the other people. So I'm going to continue with the show in the way it's supposed to go. Okay? Thank you. I thought it was about... Right. Okay. Was about okay, Ace. Thank you very much. Right, so moving on. <laughs> right. So, right. Teacher Bray says, yes, yeah, sexual attraction doesn't mean I want to sleep with them right away. I feel I feel men feel like they have to sleep with you straight away and go in about it. And if you don't feel the same, you don't like them. OK. All right. So what teacher is saying here is that sexual attraction is good, but it doesn't mean to say that she wants to deal with or sleep with the person straight away. And maybe if they, if you say that, that means that you don't like them. If that right, let me know, Tisha, if that's right, if I've got that from reading what you said. Simone Gordon says, if men are looking for a wife, they will wait. If they want a companion to kick out with, they ain't waiting. Plenty of fish in the sea, as they say. So. I mean, what I'm gathering from here, from what the women are saying is the, the, there's a common thread of what women are saying here. And there must be a reason why. There must be a reason why. And that is because of the experiences that they've had, right? I agree. That last statement there is fantastic. And that goes both way for men and women. If they, if they agree on that, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. But what I... I Go on, yeah, what, go on. Yeah, very quickly, what I said before, though, I mean, imagine we had there's five, now there's seven, yeah, and distance and now sex come into it, and the yeah. subject of sex is like it's overshadowed everything else. It's, it's pretty much like pulverized every other item. And, and that's what you're saying, that this connection would be your physical touch, would be your gifts, would be words of affirmation, would be the other two that come to mind now. Yeah. But when sex comes up, it's, it's almost like this big taboo, like this, this gremlin just came from the sky. It's like, and, and I think this is such a sensitive conversation and, and there's so much different. I'm glad we're actually, I'm glad we're talking about this. It's a, it's a really, really strong comment. Let me just make it clear that there are six, six languages of love. The seventh is what Ace brought up on our show, right? So there is an author who's written two books and the first book has five of the love languages and he's come with a new one, bringing the sixth one, which is distance. But Ace felt there was another one and Ace wasn't the only man who brought this to my attention. Ace didn't tell me on Sunday what we, he, his language was that he was bringing. He kept that a secret. We found that out on the day. I found that out on the day. He had that in mind. But what, what he didn't know is that I had a conversation prior to any of this with a man who gave me his three and he mentioned, and it wasn't just sex, it was good sex. That's what he said. And I just didn't really think anything of it. And I've got it written down here. So as we were bringing the conversation to the forefront this evening, I thought, okay, let me just throw that in just to add that. So it's not that I haven't had the conversations, hold on, the conversations we've had, um, there was a common thread from last week. There was a common thread. And the common thread was trust, 
and um, what's the other one? I've lost a piece of paper now. There was two things that most people had said. Sex never came in, there. so I left it. I left that. Yeah, come in. What was his three? What was his three? His three. Hold oh, on. I've written on so many bits of paper now. Hold oh, on, hold on, hold on. Oh, baby gone. His three, here it is, were communication, trust and honesty and good sex. Right. I mean, I'm, I mean, look at those quality words that you use there. That it's almost like those words, mm-hmm. communication, honesty, yeah, two people coming together. Mm-hmm are now agreeing mm-hmm. so both, both bodies are, you know, heaven, earth, both bodies, with those words, he's now bringing in trust, communication, and, and, and honesty, mm-hmm. okay? And that's his good sex in there as well. Because mm-hmm. I'm now asking, what does he mean? Like, what is good sex? Like, what is good sex? Mm-hmm. Uh, is it just the activity? Or is it that there is this connection there is this um, out of heaven experience, so out of experience. I mean, there's there's some most probably some common values and morals yeah. to now make it good sex. I mean, I would, I would he's actually on on this right now, so he can he can explain what good sex is because what is good sex? I'm not sure if he he might be listening, but we did the conversation did go further because I wanted to clarify that and. Um, the word intimacy came up. Yeah. The word intimacy came up. Can but I, in our conversations last week, that did nobody mentioned it. Nobody mentioned it in the conversation as their three, one of their three most important things. And so after Ace brought it up on Sunday on our show, which shows at eight o'clock on uh on YouTube, media.net TV. You can tell the right thing, Ace. And so um, because we do that show, it came up, Ace brought that up in conversation and we are now expanding on that. So, okay. But I didn't want to get into the sex talk. I just wanted to find out how important it was. Yeah, come in, Ace. Just to elaborate, because this is absolutely magic because I carry on asked a, a question, which I didn't know he was going to ask about that gentleman and what is good sex? Mm-hmm. And then you answered the question by saying he actually referred to good sex as being intimacy. And once again, the third time in this conversation, on Sunday, when I brought sex as a love language, I said, you need to break it, I'm gonna break it down because it's my love language. And I broke it down. I started off with activity, how frequent you have sex, etc. Then we went deeper and I said, the next part of that is now intimacy because sex is a big subject and you need to break it down. Yeah. And so it's interesting that they put this up as the sex, sex being the seventh language of love and there's now a common denominator with everything that keeps being said. So I just thank you very much for asking that question, Kelly, on, and that's interesting. It, it, it does boil down to intimacy. And one more time, for clarity, I just want to say there's a big difference between having sex and making love. And you can make love without penetration. Of course, absolutely. That's so true. Right. So let's go back. Daniel's laughing. That's right. Hold on. This there's so much on the thread that we've missed. So just to go back, we've we've got 45 people watching us tonight. So I want to welcome everybody that's here um, watching this. You are able to get involved in this and come into the Zoom room. If, you, if you've got something to say, that well, I'm not saying that everyone's got things that, that are not worth saying, but if you've got something to say, you want to get involved on the panel, do come onto the panel. Um, if you've been watching, you'll see um, that it can get quite spicy in this room and um, we love it. Oh, Veronica wants to come in. Veronica, come in. Can you unmute yourself? Hi, um, I just wanted to have two points that about the same sexual thing because we are big adults in here, and I find that I think that we have grown so much that I haven't heard none of the men say they say because it coming up I used to hear men say, "Oh, even in church, you will hear men saying, oh, 'Oh, I'm not buying no pig in a bag," and I surprised. Say that again for me. I didn't get that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, coming up, 
even in church, you will hear guys that will go with girls and ten will say, "Oh, you know, we talk about waiting until you get married and stuff." But you, you got you had some guys that know to say to you, "Oh, I'm not buying no pig and no bank bank it," meaning that they're not waiting. And that was one point I wanted to make. But the other point I wanted to ask is like, yes, we believe in people believe in waiting to have this before them get intimate. But before now that you go now two months or three months into a relationship waiting on this individual, and then I'm going now as a woman to a man, and when you get now to go and be intimate now with this man and being real, this man cannot perform. What do you do? What do you do? That's what you're supposed to do. I'd be real. Okay, so 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 we right. So we kind of covered this. We kind of covered this on Sunday, um, but not in terms of a new relationship. This was more in terms of an older relationship, and um, because I was talking about, uh, we were talking about. it's not just, because basically um, Ace had brought into the conversation that he'd had conversations with old men who were married and sex had, had now gone out of the relationship. And so we were talking it from that perspective. And I was telling him that uh, a, a client of mine, a client and a friend of mine um, who was having um, issues with um, his body parts, right? So he was having some issues Uh, premature um, ejaculation and all kinds of things and he didn't and and erectile dysfunction and he didn't feel confident enough to speak to his wife and he spoke to me about it and the reassurance that I gave him was to go back and talk to his wife and but, but he was scared of telling his wife that was the reason why he was rejecting her to cut a long story short he did go and speak to his wife and his wife took him straight to the doctors. They found out he was diabetic, which is the reason why. And so they've worked through that and and now their marriage is thriving. When it comes to, um, when it comes to a new relationship, this this is a tough one. If you don't know, because you have to work with what you've got. You're, You're married now. And that's why some people don't wait until they're married some some people wait some people will you know have a period of time and then they will uh, try before they buy as it were so we've got some new people entering the zoom room right so now i have to say that the zoom room is now closed there will be no more entries because we've only literally got about 15 minutes left of the show. You see, when you're having fun, when you're talking good conversation, the time goes really, really quickly. So I want to say good evening to Cheryl. How are you, my darling? Um, oh, you're on mute. Do you want to unmute yourself? Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm fine. Sorry, I'm late. You're lit. All right. Yeah. yeah. Sound like I'm missing some good Yes, it's been very, very juicy tonight. Very, very juicy. Pardon the pun. We have been talking about sex. Oh, let's talk yeah. about it. Okay. So what we, what we said, how important is sex to you? And when would you introduce it to the relationship? But we've kind of moved on from there and we're looking at different components now. And a question was asked by Veronica that if you don't have sex before you're married and then you get married and the man has problems in the bedroom, then what do you do? You talk about it. You talk about it. You mm. talk about it. And also, just to let you know, I'm just going to plant a seed here. On every Wednesday on Instagram, Ace and I are going to be live at 12 o'clock with dilemmas. So if you have a dilemma and you want uh, some, some advice, <laughs> we will be on uh, Instagram and we will be doing that live every Wednesday at 12 <laughs> midday. All right, so, um, yeah, so, okay guys, we've got the last 15 minutes. Veronica, oh, you've got, you've got me on timer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can uh, I quickly say something? Yes, yeah, of course you can. Yeah, because the thing is this, is that um, I remember I went to um, a, a, a program or a, a night called The Naked Truth. 
Yeah, this was on a Friday, if you can remember that, yeah? That came on yeah, other... you went to the programme? No, not the programme, but um, the, like a night out. It was a night every, 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 other, every other month. Okay. With, um, with the Man Academy at the time, yeah? And Woman Academy. And this uh, conversation did come up, and both men and women were saying what they do want from each other. And it was very clear that some women needed girth. That, that they needed to have girth. If they didn't have um, that that thickness, it was like, sorry, but I just can't have you as um, as the as our boyfriend, husband, however you want to put it. And I was like, you know what? Good for you. If that's what you need to actually make you, you know, because it's healing. You know, it, sex, the sexual activity is healing. And for her, that's what she needed. She wanted that. And she was almost made to look bad for that. I was like, well, no, that's what she wants. There's some men, they prefer certain things themselves. You know what I mean? Someone's like, what, what, what I'm saying here? Well, I think she was angry, I think. Anyway, you know, so I think there are preferences. Um, you know, women, you know, like if a woman, if on hinge and a woman is six foot, I know it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> It's just, I know it ain't. And I would, I would try a thing. Why do you know it ain't going to happen, Kim Hillier? Why is that? Why? Because women want, they tend to want a man that's taller. They, it's, it's something, tend to. I didn't say, oh, Ruth, I said tend to. Yeah, okay. Let the yeah. women talk. Go on, let, let them talk. Go on. Who's coming in? Quickly. You coming in, Ruth? Who's coming yeah, in? Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, thanks for the correction, Kelly. On, I really appreciate that. Because I actually was see when I was um, doing my shopping the other day, I saw this woman. She was about six foot three. And the guy she was with, he could have been like shorter than me. I'm five foot seven. And they, we were by the cheese section and she was looking for this little cheese thing. And I said to her, why don't you ask your husband to see if there's any down there? And she was like, babe, can you go and check to see? And she was really tall and he was very much shorter than her, but you know, it, it, it works. Sometimes we look at people and wonder how and why and this, that, the other. By the way, it wasn't a correction. I just saw that two people are disagreed with what I said, and I just gave you the chance to talk. And what I said was a generalization, by the way. Yeah, same. You're gonna, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to get exceptions. I'm saying that the, the hinge or any other apps I've been on, and on that six foot, and or prior ting, and I say, sorry, bro, but you're five foot eight. And they'll laugh and everything. <laughs> you're just. Are small. you five foot eight, Kelly? On? I'm five foot eight. Okay. Do you find it difficult? What for with a taller woman? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the thing is that, funny enough, I'm attracted to beautiful women. Don't get me wrong, but um, I would have to obviously really be into them. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'll just give you thirty seconds. Yeah. But, but thank you, Veronica. I'd have to be into them to actually want to. But I think that I do have my preference really in my height or a bit taller, especially on the dance floor. Especially in my raggy and my soca, okay? I always mm -hmm. say, okay, all right? When I mean, when me I dance, me I have to know that, you know, me I can dance with you, okay? I won't say anything else, okay? I'll just keep it there. Six foot lady ain't gonna really work for me on the dance floor. Ain't yeah, I work. get that. <laughs> and you can always remember heels as well. Y yes, that's it. Then you've you're got Taylor in consideration. And a woman looking down on you, psychologically, that's sometimes can be a bit messed up. Okay. Yeah. As, a, as, a man in, as a man in the room, I don't share any of your sentiments. I've made this joke often and it's got me in trouble, but no matter how um, tall a woman is, when you lie down, you're all the same size. Yeah, yeah. And straight, I'm, a, I'm a man like this here. Miliko uh, Batmitalawa, them says, um, them says small axe chopped down big tree. And I, I've I dated the most tall, slim, sexy, slim, slim, slim woman, sexy, all of that. So to me, it's really it's about attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. You understand? So I don't have that problem with women. If I find a woman attractive, I find her attractive. And whether she's taller than me, it has 
stop me. Listen, I'm just saying on the dance floor, on the bed, that's cool. I ain't got no problem with that. So that doesn't bother me. Bedroom, all right. Yeah, right. I mean, back here, as long as, you know, we have certain things in place, I'm all right. I'm saying on the dance floor, me, I like to dance. You know what I'm saying? And a six foot lady with heels ain't going to work for me on the dance floor. That's what I'm saying to you. Nothing with attitude or altitude. You know what I'm, saying? I'm just saying there's certain things I like to do in certain places. And me, I love to dance. And a six foot lady ain't going to be doing it for me unless I get a chair. That's what I'm saying. And my reply to that is I'm not really into the dancing, you know. So, um, you know, that doesn't really bother me. But the height when it comes to women, I've dated women all different types, you know. Can I, can I come in there? I'll just say that, you know, as we're talking about the height of things, my mother was a lot taller than my dad. And I know that there was a, a time when that was really common, that women tall, tall. My mum was tall and my dad was short. My uncle is short and his wife is tall. And, and it goes throughout the family. It's like all of them, all my aunties and uncles, it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. So, we, so I, I, am, I am vertically challenged sometimes. Sometimes I'm vertically challenged. Um, so, and I would be looked upon as a shorter woman. That's why I say vertically challenged, right? So, um, so really, it, as long for me, as long as the man is taller than me when I have my heels on, it would be helpful. I personally would find it very difficult to date a man that's shorter than me, right? Because I'm five foot. So if he's shorter than five foot and I like heels, it's not going to work for me. I'm just saying. You know, so but he could be seven foot. That wouldn't make a difference to me as long as he's taller than me. When I have my heels on, we're cool. Yeah. So we're coming down to the last few minutes, guys. Um, we've got some more comments on Facebook, guys. I look. I'm struggling with the one one sided glasses. I'm going to have to get some things we've got some new people in the the room as well so um francois you've got in here eventually you're still connected can you hear me francois i can now finally right at the oh, very end can you hear me i can hear you loud right. and clear excellent okay is there, is there anything that you want to add while i'm um because i'm just about to wrap up closing this. up no no i'll join you next time <laughs> okay well we will be here next week uh, mm. Tuesday. We are here every Tuesday okay. uh, at, at 10 o'clock till midnight and we do this. I want to say a big shout out actually to all of the 45 people who are on Facebook this evening. Tell Join me about our show. Say again? Don't forget to tell our, our Love Zone show on Sunday. Yeah, yes, I will do that. I will. Um, so guys on Facebook, I want to thank you for all the input. All the input Rachel Grant is saying, lying down, height don't make no difference. Woo! Simone says, a shorter guy can have a bigger heart. Um, <laughs> Brother Deep said, Ken, you must wear your size. But the rain said something that's quite important. Make love to my mind and not my body, no matter what your height is. It's all the same. That's what she's saying. Right, so guys, I do want you to remember, those of you who are listening, please listen carefully. We have a show called The Love Zone. It is hosted by Ace Got Talk and myself. We will we stream every Sunday at 8 p.m. on YouTube. And we need you to support the show. This show is for us, by us. We are doing it a different way. And we're talking about different subjects on a weekly basis. And it. The same fire you get here is the same fire you get on the screen live and direct. Um, so please do join us for The Love Zone. It's new, it's fresh, and it is really there to give you tools to help you throughout your relationships. Also, I'd like to say today's Tuesday. So tomorrow we are on Instagram. The, the Instagram page is thelove.zone. Follow us. It's a new page. So we need you to jump onto Instagram and follow us, the love dot zone. And we will be doing a face, not Facebook, we'll be doing an Insta live at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock 
um, midday tomorrow. So please do join us. We'll be back here um, between the hours of 10 and midnight for Conversations After Dark and we're talking relationships. We have come to the end, but I'm just going to ask everybody to just stay where you are because I need to do something before we go. I do need to just take us off here. Good night, good night, good night. Stay where you are. And we're done. Okay, so. So just saying, just saying to you, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Have you found this informative? Have you enjoyed the show? If you've enjoyed the show, guys on Facebook, can you put some love, give us some love hearts, some thumbs up if you've enjoyed the show. Those of you who are in the Zoom room, have you enjoyed the show this evening? If you could just wave if you've enjoyed the show. I want to thank you. We've got Brother Clinton there. He's been very quiet, but we hope to see you again next week, Brother Clinton. Yeah, I hope to see you again and be more inclusive in what we are saying. But for now, oh, yeah, uh, Veronica, you want yeah, to I just, I just want, I, Before we go, I just wanted to ask is, if you get back a new car, since he burned up a car, he love the love story and he gets so hot that the car couldn't take it no more. Is you mean the love, you know, the love but it was hot in that car, burn up the car. This yeah. love story is going to his head, Yvonne. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. <laughs> the man so, so much looking for so much love, the car was so hot, he burned up the car. I saw your heart. Yeah. Yes, yes, I saw your heart. <laughs> hot light. I, uh, listen, yeah. listen, you know what, Ace, Ace is, you know, when I saw that fire, I was just like grateful to God because he sure. was in that car, that would have been a whole different story. And you've got oh, so the more to be saying. Yeah, it's got so all yeah, but yeah. do you know what, tell you the truth, um, the car went up in flames, but I felt such a, a sense of relief when it went up because I'm just so unattached to anything material you know, that, it, you know, you, it's just spiritual growth. It's enlightenment, it's enlightenment. Sure. And even just, we talk about relationships tonight. And I just want to finish on this one. Some people talk about looking for their other half, their other half. I never look for my other half because I'm a whole person. I'm not half a man. You don't know half a man. You want a whole man. So in life, we, we, it's always important to try and find that wholeness within. And then whenever when you meet anybody else, that just becomes a bonus. You're two happy people, but never ever look for for loving somebody else. We must first love ourselves. And when we love ourselves, we can only give what we have. You understand what I'm saying? So if we don't have love, we can't give it. So salute. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week, same time. Peace. And on that note, we're gonna wish, wish you all a good night. Stay safe. God bless. Look after. See you here. See you tomorrow on Insta at 12 if not Sunday at 8 p.m. Ciao, ciao for now. Thank you so much. Bye, bye. This is your Facebook. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. -bye. bye.